The images have been heartbreaking. Australian native animals killed or injured while trapped by fire. I think the, the worst affected in, the, in an immediate sense will be the large and slow moving ones and the koalas uh, I guess are probably the, the most visible um, examples in this group and we've all seen I'm sure some of the horrible videos that, um, that have been captured of koalas escaping the flames with, um, with burns on their arms and face. Academy fellow Chris Dickman first estimated that half a billion animals had been killed. But as the fires continued to rage, he now puts that figure at over a billion. And that number doesn't include frogs, bats, fish or insects. For a lot of species that have small populations or small geographical distributions, if the fire affects the entire habitat where they occur, then they're at risk of imminent extinction. And even if they survive the fires, they still must deal with the loss of habitat and food and the threat from feral animals such as foxes and cats. Among the better known, better catalogued examples are species like the long-footed potteroo that occurs in East Gippsland and just over the border into southern New South Wales. A very small distribution, small population, and fires have burnt all or most of the habitat that we know where the potteroo occurs. And there are other species too that are perhaps even better known and more iconic. In the high country, in Kosciuszko, there's the mountain pygmy possum and the southern corroboree frog. And although the habitats haven't burnt yet, there are fires in both Victoria and the New South Wales side of the Alpine region. And it's possible that um, the habitat for both of these species will go up in flames. The loss of so many animals will have a major effect on how our forests regrow. Take as an example the potteroos. And these species are important in the sense that they eat fungi. And the fungi they eat are important for plant regeneration and growth. So the potteroos dig in the surface soil, they find the fruiting bodies of the fungi, they eat them, and then they, as the spores pass through the body and out the other end, they're scattered across the landscape. And then when you have a disturbance event, the mycorrhizal fungi are able to form around the roots of growing plants enabling to gather more nutrients and thus speeding their growth. If you lose the potteroos from forest areas, then you potentially lose the ability of, uh, of the spores to get around and to help, uh, help with forest regeneration. Professor Dickman says the impact of this disaster will be long lasting. We're clearly at risk of losing a significant proportion of biodiversity. And because much of Australian biodiversity occurs only here, um, it's, it's a global loss. 2019 was the hottest and driest year on record for Australia. The first time both records have been broken together. Perhaps the rest of the world is looking on to see what it might be like for them in years to come and uh, learning from Australia's woes at the moment to see how they can best manage their, uh, their natural environment to mitigate the effects.